Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining History Ministries. I am Minister Anisha Davis. We are so excited to have you join in with us today. We are ecstatic because we're on part five on a series entitled, You Have Been Called Higher. So we're going to go ahead and get into part five. But before we do, let me go ahead and let's bow our head in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your loving Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the work that he finished on the cross for us. It is because of his finished work on the cross that we have life today. And not just have life, we have eternal life, abundant life, a restored life, Father. We have more than enough. We are hidden in your son, Jesus. We are seated at the right hand of him in heavenly places. And for that today, we just say thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for bringing revelation of the truths that we are about to talk about today. We thank you for the scriptures. We thank you for the meditating, the ability to be able to meditate on your word. We apply it, Lord God. We thank you that it is transforming us out of the darkened space that we may have been in in this area and to the light, to what you desire for us, to what has been predestined for us. And today we just want to say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, the message is entitled, You Have Been Called Higher. You Have Been Called Higher. And it's part five, Eternal Rest Continued. And so we talked about Eternal Rest in part four, and here we are on part five. If you have not gone over that message, I do encourage you to go over that message so that part five can be more clear to you, so it you can get the revelation that God desires for you to have in this message of you being called higher. Amen. And so part five, again, eternal rest. And this time we're going to be talking about being focused. Where are you? Where is your focus? Are you focused? Are you moving forward in the plans that God has for your life? If not, today we pray that this message brings forth transformation in your life, that you're able to move forward in the things that God have called you to. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and get started here. If you want to know how to receive the abundant life God has for you, you're going to have to allow the word of God to bring your views into focus. Amen. So your natural eyes do not have the ability to get you there. Only the word of God is able to transport you from darkness to to light. I'll say that again. Only the word of God has the ability to transfer, transport you from darkness into the light of his marvelous son. If you're not in his word, his word is not in you. Again, if you're not in the word of God, the word of God is not in you. Remember, we talked about the sweat of the brow in the last two Sundays. So in part three and part four, go back and, and um, study those two uh, messages. We talked about the sweat of the brow, sweat of the brow. I know this is hard to wrap our brain around, but we are products of the sweat of the brow. Whose brow? Adam's brow. When God told Adam and Eve, remove them from the garden and told Adam that everything that you try to receive, the bread that you're going to try to receive in your own strength will be by the sweat of your brow. Amen. That means we don't have communication. We don't have we're not in a relationship. I'm still protecting and covering you. Because remember, God covered them as he sent them out of that garden. But what was the purpose of that? Because of their sin, because of them partaking of the trickery and cunning and craftiness of the enemy, because of them partaking of the lie of the enemy, saying that they will be as God, meaning... Um, a different type of God, being apart from God, being able to be their own God and their own strength. And that is not what God called them to. God called them to have relationship. And in that relationship, hallelujah, they will have the fullness of what God has called them to. You and I today, we have the fullness of what God called us to as we are in relationship with him and being in relationship with him helps, amen, build the body of Christ. Amen. So again, 
that lie caused them to be placed outside of the garden. And because they were placed outside of the garden, now they had to till the land. Now they had to till that garden where that garden was able to, to produce everything that they needed. If you want to go and read that, that's in Genesis 2. Everything that they needed, Genesis 1 and 2, I'm sorry, everything that they needed, God provided. But because they partook of the lie of the enemy, believing that they can do everything in their own strength, just take for a moment, just say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for breaking that curse off of our life. Hallelujah that we've been set free by the blood of the lamb. Amen. So when they partook and fell for that lie, they were placed outside of the garden and them being placed out of, outside of the garden meant that they now have to till that land that God had already formed for them. They had to till it in order to produce bread. And the only way they were going to do it is was by the sweat of their brow. So that's what we mean when we say sweat of the brow. Amen. Hallelujah. The only word of God, oh, I'm sorry, only the word of God can deliver us from lack of knowledge to wisdom and knowledge. This only occurs when we are willing to die. That is why the narrow path is less taken. What narrow path? Choosing Christ. Most of us in this world, we want to do things in our own strength. We do not want to meditate. We do not want to spend time with God. So we go out and we work and we till and we till and we till, not allowing the word of God to transform our life. Matthew 7, 13, enter into the narrow gate for the wide, for wide is the gate and broad and easy to travel is the path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss. What is that way? Choosing the world way getting up every morning, going and working nine to five, not allowing God to lead and guide you in that nine to five, not spending time in the word, allowing the word to lead and guide you. No, that is not God's desire for our life. And there are many who enter through it. This is what Jesus said, but small is the gate and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads the way to everlasting life. And there are few who find it, few who find it. Let us be ones that find it. Amen. Matthew 19, 4. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for someone to enter, for someone who is rich to enter into the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That means because rich men believe that they have created in their own strength, it is going to be harder for them to enter into the kingdom because they feel like they've gained everything in their own efforts. So they don't need God. Oh. What an awful way to be. What an awful way to think. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping us. We are going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us out of the wilderness of our own thinking. No longer thinking like that. We must allow the Holy Spirit to bring us into a place of eternal rest. The word of God must permeate our minds. This allows his truth to flood our souls and manifest through our body, a.k.a. being prosperous and healthy. So the truth of God floods our soul, renews our mind, which transforms the body for us to be healthy and also having witty inventions and ideas and gaining prosperity. Because what does God say in Deuteronomy? I have given you the ability to obtain wealth. Thank you, Daddy, for the ability to obtain wealth. He tells us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah for the finished work of the cross. Jesus says, for my work for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. What is a yoke? A yoke is a neck piece that is placed around the neck of an ox. It steers the ox in the right direction so that he can plow as the farmer desires. The yoke is a type and shadow of the cross. Wooden being carried on the shoulders to lighten the load by distributing the weight evenly. It was God through the Son of God that took on the cross for you and me. Receive his yoke of death, burial, and the resurrection so that your burden can be light. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just thinking about that for a moment. 
just thinking about how he gave his life so that you and I may have eternal life. Hallelujah. This is a personal choice. And let us look at Romans chapter eight, verses 28 through 35. Again, it's a personal choice. We talked about Romans chapter eight, 28 through 35 over in um, the message of three and four. We're going to talk about it again today. And we know, we know with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according, according to his plan and purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he loved and chose beforehand, and also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, and ultimately share in his complete sanctification, so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, declared free of guilt of sin. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity. What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can successful, who can be successful against us? He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, who will, I'm sorry, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? God is so loving, guys. He gave up his own son. How will he not graciously give us all things? God never desired for us to go out and work by the sweat of our brow. He never desired that for Adam. He never desired that for Eve. It's when we get into the process of thinking for ourselves, thinking that we know how to bring forth a life for us. I'm telling you guys, it will run you in circles. And we're going to talk about that later on in the message. Getting you nowhere. He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things. Think about that for a minute. Who will bring a charge against God's elect, his chosen one? It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless and putting us in right relationship with himself. It's God, amen, not us. We can't make ourselves righteous. Only God can through his son, amen. Who is the one who condemns us? Jesus Christ is the one who died to pay our penalty and penalty. And more than that, who was raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of God interceding with the father for us? Who shall, I'm sorry, who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ with tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, we are God's elect. So the question is, how long will we let the cares of this world separate us from the love of God? Because that's what I was about to say. Everything that this scripture talks about, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, and the sword, death of the sword, the world is what separates us. The world is what, is what causes all those things. God said nothing can separate us from his love. So it is not God separating from us, guys. It is us who will not receive his love, his son. Who is his son? Jesus, but not just Jesus. He is Christ, our Lord and savior. He is the word of God made flesh. He is the word of God in the flesh. We separate from him. He never separates from us. Think about that for a minute. We separate from him, guys. Amen. We are still just wandering in the wilderness, making our own way, even today. Even in the wilderness, God led them. It says in Exodus 1, 21 through 22, the presence of God is going before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they could travel by day and night. Even in our darkness, God leads us. 
Even in our mess, even in our shortcomings, he will never leave nor forsake us. Even when we fall, we are not utterly cast down, but he upholds us with his hand. That's Psalm 37. Amen. It is important for us to know truth. The pillar of light, the pillar of fire, the pillar of a cloud, the pillar of a fire. Amen. God did not withdraw the cloud nor the fire. Who is our pillar today? Jesus. Jesus is our pillar. By day and by night, the word of God leads and guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit is our God. He is the one that testifies of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he said that he will never leave nor forsake us. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Who is leading us? If there's no Jesus, there's no leader. So if you're out there in the world and you're not meditating and spending time in the word of God, if you don't believe in God and you don't believe in Christ, that means you're self-led. Amen. That means you're on a path to destruction. When it comes to the children of Israel in the wilderness, it was their thoughts, their heart, continually all focused, going in circles. Anytime they focus on self, looking for food, shelter, and clothing, it led to stress, murmuring and complaining no relationship only expectations and self-effort the desire to enter back into egypt as we're out in the world only self-effort but when god led them his desire for us they tra they were transformed out of darkness into light they came into the promised land. All of them did not come, but those that let God lead, those that trusted, relied on, and cling to God, they were led out of darkness into light. They were led out of poverty into abundance. When they focused on the cloud and fire, they were on their way to the promised land, lacking nothing. They didn't lack anything. Who is leading you and I? No Jesus, no leader. Us, the wilderness our thoughts, our heart, continually all focus, going in circles. Amen. Anytime we focus on self, food, shelter, clothing, job, hustling, getting rich, wealthy, it leads to stress, murmuring, and complaining. Never having a relationship, never coming into a relationship with God, never allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. Only expectation and self-effort. The desire to continuously return to the world system. That is not what God desires for us. Amen. When we allow God to, to lead, he desires for us to rest. And we become focused, meaning we're resting. It means that we're resting. When we focus on the finished work of the cross, we are immediately transferred into the kingdom. The more we behold, the more we are transformed, lacking nothing. The same thing went back then is the same thing for us today. When we behold Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God and his finished work, amen, we receive eternal life. Self-effort equals the desire to return to Egypt. That was their self-effort. What does this look like? Every time we have a need, we believe that money is the answer. God is the only answer to all of our needs. That's something we all have to spend time in the word and then let God renew our mind in. It is a daily walk with God because of the demands of this world constantly try to lead us astray through finances. But God is the only answer. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I'm telling you, I'm getting I'm getting fed. Amen. Right now, even as I minister this word to you, every time I minister the word, I don't care how many times I go over this message, these messages that I continue to put out on YouTube, I'm being fed. My life is transforming. Amen. And I declare that same thing for your life, renewing our minds in the word of God, letting this word, letting my words that are coming out of my mouth become truth to you to transform your life out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. And it's no, I'm transforming and oh, it's going to take a while. No, God is able to transform you immediately. Amen. Hallelujah. God is the only answer to all of our needs. Roman 8, 28 tells us that we are predestined and to be predestined in his word is defined as God planned. You're not here by mistake. God planned for you to be here at this very moment, at this very time. 
hearing this message. Why? Because he wants to do a thing in you. He wants to activate that plan that he has for your life. And I decree by the blood of the lamb that it become activated in your life in Jesus name. I'm standing for you. I'm interceding on your behalf. When I pray in my heavenly language, I may not know your name or who you are, but I trust God. Amen. That every need is met. I trust God that healing is coming forth. I trust God that restoration is coming forth. I speak the name of Jesus over your life. I plead the blood of Jesus. Every demon has to flee in the name of Jesus. Poverty, you have to dry up in the name of Jesus. We thank you for overflow. We thank you for healing. We thank you for constant healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Supernatural, speedy healing in the name of Jesus. Renewed mindset. Thank you, Daddy, for doors opening to those businesses. Thank you, Daddy, in the name of Jesus for that, that witty invention and idea coming forth in the name of Jesus. I speak life to all those that belong to you. We are the body of Christ. Amen. We Hallelujah are the body and you are the head. You are Abba. And we are in a kingdom that has more than enough that flourishes. And because we are in that kingdom, we have access to every gift that you have for our life, for the plan that you have for our life. Every need being met in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Let's look at the journey. All were focused at certain times. Some let their flesh get the best of them causing distractions for all of them. Some of them let their flesh get the best of them, but it caused a distraction for all of them and causing sin to manifest and lead to death of many. So you got some of them that were distracted, but God saw them as one. And because of their distract, because of their being off focus and operating in the flesh, it distracted all of them and it caused many of them to die. But thank God for Joshua and Caleb, who were of a different spirit. Amen. What is sin? Exodus 19, 7 through 8. So Moses called all the elders of the people and told them all these words, which the Lord commanded him. All the people answered together and said, we will do everything that the Lord has spoken. And Moses reported the word of the people to the Lord. The moment you make a conscious decision that you can do anything, God tells you, in your own strength, apart from God, you just activated death. What does this look like today? Every day we get up out of our bed and lay our head down at night without the pillar of cloud and fire, the Holy Spirit and the word of God leading and guiding us. We are deciding to die every day. We have to make it a point and a plan to allow the word of God to be a part of our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that we choose you today. The moment we make a conscious decision that we can do anything God tells us in our own strength, apart from God, death is being activated. Woo. My God, Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not going to let death lead and guide us. We're going to trust God. It is a must to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. Each of us must come to understand that meditation is our life. The word of God is our life. The Holy Spirit is the comforter of our life. He's the comforter of the life that God has given us. It has to become a reality for us. When it becomes our reality, we realize through his word that we are his body. The body is to work together, being led by the head to bring life to the world. When we all meditate, we can edify the body of Christ. How does this look? When Christ is manifested through us, we uplift each other. Only a person who knows who they are and why they are here can truly rest. Only a person who is resting can uplift. And as we uplift each other, we are confirming the promises of God, which are revealed by the Holy Spirit through the word. I'll say that again. Only a person who knows who they are and why they are here can truly rest. And only a person who is resting can uplift. And when we uplift each other, we are confirming the promises of God, which are revealed by the Holy Spirit through his word. Amen. What does this have to do with eternal rest? 
If you are not allowing a relationship with God that is formed through the receiving of his son by way of the Holy Spirit be your foundation, what is being edified to you from his spirit has no place to rest. In other words, if you don't have a relationship with God and you're going to church or you're hearing messages and they're not penetrating, it's because they have no place to rest. The ground is hard and prideful wilderness experience, just like the children of Israel. Many fell dead in that wilderness. We're going to believe God. Hallelujah. By faith. We are, we are releasing our life to him in this very moment. Thank you, Father God, for plowing, plowing, amen, this hard and ground heart of ours. Amen. Thank you that it's being sifted. Amen. Thank you that it's being cultivated to receive your word that is being planted in us in this very moment, that it becomes our life. The children of Israel, they fail. That means to die. Not because God deserted them not because of their inability to produce in their own efforts. They fail. They die because they refuse to accept God's hand on their life. They refuse to accept the life God provided for his son. They rejected the fact that the law is holy. The law is his son. Only a relationship with the father can conform you to the image of his son. Nothing in our own efforts is possible nothing. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13 verses 20 and 22. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom regarding salvation and does not understand and grasp it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on a rocky ground. This is the one who hears the word and at once welcomes it with joy. Yet he has no substantial root in himself, but it's only temporarily. And when pressure or persecution comes because of the word immediately he stumbles and fall away abandoning the one who is the source of the of his salvation his or her salvation and the one on whom seed was sown among thorns this is the one who hears the word but the worries and distractions of the world and the deceitfulness the superficial pleasures and delight of riches choke the word and it yields no fruit selah all are guilty Help us, Lord. Thank you for sending us the helper that this will no longer be our life, that you are plowing our heart, as I stated, that we be transformed into the image of your son and that we receive the fullness of what you have called us to. If you're not in a place in your life that somewhere along the day you are talking about your Lord and Savior, you are not allowing Christ to flow through you. We should be setting the captives free through the preaching of the gospel. It's the good news of Jesus Christ that is needed to bring healing to people that are all focused, suffering, sick, stressed, tired, heavy laden, and needing rest. We should be seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not setting alarm clocks only to produce the sweat of the brow. We should be compelled to wake up every day because we know the truth that will set someone free on our job or in our business. If you are on a job, preach the gospel. If you're in school, preach the gospel. Let your life be a light shining forth the gospel. If you are running your own business, preach the gospel. Amen. Tell someone about Jesus today. Tell someone about the goodness of our Lord and Savior. Why are we not doing this? This is why is because we are low on Jesus and high on the world. We are too busy submitting to the cares of the world. And this is why we are always on E when it comes to the word of God. If you're wondering why nothing's coming out of you, because you're not allowing anything to enter into you to come out of you at an opportune time. Preaching the word of God is equivalent to Christ walking the earth and preaching the gospel. Are we his body or not? Others should be getting healed by being in our presence. Simple as that. Amen. 
There are people in this world that should be getting healed by our presence. The cares of the world snuffs out any ability for light to come and rest. That means light a fire in our hearts. The cloud of wisdom, all provided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The cares of this world snuffs out any ability for light to come and rest. Amen. The cloud of wisdom, all provided by the Holy Spirit. That light of fire and cloud of wisdom, all provided by the Holy Spirit is snuffed out because of the cares of this world. The cares of this world snuffs out the belief that Jesus died so that we may live. We are too busy building our life apart from here. And what is the cares of the world? Food, shelter, clothing that is being produced through our efforts create stress, anxiety, and many other illnesses. If his word is not manifesting in our life, it is not health to our bodies and nourishment to our bones. If his word is not manifesting in our life, Proverbs 3, it is not health to our body and nourishment to our bone. The Bible says that the word of God is health to our bodies and nourishment to our bone. It is because we are being wise in our own eyes and do not fear the Lord. Reverence him as our only way of life. Proverbs 3, 7. God did not call us to be slaves again to the world. He calls us to be slaves to righteousness Romans 6 verses 15 through 23. He calls us to be slaves to righteousness. What then are we conclude? We to conclude? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that you, that when you continue to offer yourselves to someone to do his will, you are the slaves of the one who you obey, either slaves to sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness and right standing with God. But thank God that though we were slaves of sin, we became obedient with all our heart to the standard of teaching in which we were instructed and to which we are committed. And having been set free from sin, we have become the slaves of righteousness, of conformity to God's will and purpose. I am speaking in familiar human terms because of our natural limitations, our spiritual immaturity. For just as you presented your bodies, members as slaves to impurity and to immoral lawless, leading to further lawlessness, so now offer your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. Amen? When you were slaves to sin, you were free in regards to righteousness. So what benefit did you get that at that time from the things of which you are not ashamed? None. For the outcome of those things is death. But now since you have been set free from sin and have become willing slaves to God, you have your benefit resulting in sanctification. Amen. Being made holy and set apart for God's purpose. And the outcome of this is eternal life for the wages of sin and death, but the gift but the free gift of God, that is his remarkable, overwhelming gift of grace to believers is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Write that scripture down and meditate on it. Let's talk about when they exited Egypt. When they were delivered out of Egypt, they came out with all the silver and gold. They came out with the fullness of God. They were prosperous. They were healthy. All those illnesses and plague that took place in Egypt did not touch the children of Israel. So when they exited Egypt, guys, they exited out with the fullness of God. When God's hand brought them out, it wasn't just a part of God's plan. It was the fullness of him. What does this mean by fullness? The plan to set us free was formed in Abraham being the father of many nations. The transfer of darkness to light was Egypt to Canaan. Today for us, it is from death to life in Christ Jesus. His fullness is the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine God giving his fullness in Egypt, in the wilderness, and in Canaan? He gave them their, their, his fullness. It is the perspective that we have that will determine how much of his fullness we will receive. When God called you into his son, he gave you his fullness. It is how much of his fullness we're willing to receive by dying to our own plan, perspective, and opinion about God's word. Egypt, seven plagues. Wilderness, cloud, and fire. 
And those seven plagues in Egypt, as I, like I said, did not touch them. God led them with cloud and fire, gave them manna, water, shelter, and protection. Clothing never worn out, even after years of being in the wilderness. Silver and gold, trillions and billions of dollars, when you calculate it in today's um, currency. Cain, I'm sorry, Canaan, they had land of milk and honey, huge grapes, houses that they did not build, and so much more. Yet, they murmured and complained the entire time. Can you imagine that? That's us today, continuously blessing us, yet we are murmuring and, murmuring and complaining. If you're stressed, if you're down, if you're out, it's because you're all focused. Amen. I got up today feeling a certain way, but I said, you know what? Jesus Christ is Lord, and these emotions will not rule over me today. I trust you, Lord, that I will move forward in the things that you have called me to. Hallelujah. All that God provided was never enough, although all that God provided was more than enough. From their perspective, it was never than enough. From God's perspective, it was his son. It was more than enough. They were robbed of the fullness of God because of their inability to stay focused. Stay focused, Minister Anisha. Stay focused to all of those that are listening to my message today. Stay focused. Don't let the enemy rob us of the fullness of what God has called us to. Our wilderness today is not a doing, but a receiving. All we have to do is receive the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. How do you know when you have received? It compels you to live a life that always expresses Christ. Always want to tell somebody about the goodness of God. God brought us out of the wilderness of our own thinking when he gave us his fullness. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yet we murmur and complain about fleshly, earthly desires. We have reduced the cross to worldly happiness that is only produced through our own effort. Christ is so much more, guys. He is the fullness of God that fills all in all. Amen. That's from Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And he put all things in every realm in subjection under Christ's feet and appointed him as supreme and authoritative head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills and completes all things in all believers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We are going to go here again in Romans 8, verses 28 through 32. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who, call, who are called according to his plan and purpose, for those whom he what foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also what predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately share in his complete sanctification so that he will be the firstborn among what many believers and who and those who he predestined he also called and those who he called he also justified and those whom he justified he also glorified raised them to a heavenly dignity what then shall we say to all these things if god is for us who can be successful against us he who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? This must become our reality. Everything we need in order to be predestined, called, justified, glorified is found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not found in us going to get some certificate, four-year degree, PhD, master's degree, Owning a business, running a business, all the millions and trillions in the bank, the finest clothing on our body. No, it's found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God today for this message. Our rest is not about our ability to do what he said, but his ability to do what he said. We did not say it in Romans 8, 28. He said it. It's not about if we obey it's about him. It's not about if we obey, he's going to give us that. If we obey and don't sin, he's going to give us that. No, God has dealt with sin once and for all in the finished work of the cross. If you're sinning, it's because you're not in relationship with him and you're not allowing his word to transform you. It has nothing to do with God blessing you. 
That is of the world. Amen. Not of God. Because you see many people out there doing things totally opposite of God, but they are millionaires, trillionaires, billionaires. Has nothing to do with God. God has called us out of that system and into the kingdom of his dear son. He has already obeyed and paid with his life. Jesus did it. It's not about us tilling by the sweat of our brow. It is about the thorns that were placed on his head to afford us the freedom to live life eternal. We are set free, guys. But we want to stay in the world and be on a hamster wheel. And that's not what God called us to. If we get on the hamster wheel of this world, also known as the world system, it will keep our spirit silent, our souls trapped, and cause our body to slowly perish until death. Christ asked his disciples, why are they asleep when he was about to die? If you go read in the New Testament, you'll see, hear the story of Christ's death over and over again in the Gospels. And he asked them, why are you sleeping? Because you're on a hamster wheel. The hamster wheel light going in circles, never getting you anywhere. It's a self-effort. It's darkness. That's what he meant. They were in darkness. The world, the heaviness, living out from the flesh. Hallelujah. That lack of knowledge. Slave to the world system. Living life from our own perspective. Having the appearance of moving for God. It's like, I'm about to die. And all you could do is sleep. You should be wanting to feed off me, feed off me as much as possible before they take me to this cross. We should be feeding off of the word of God daily. But when we live life apart on our own perspective, having the appearance of moving forward, we are literally asleep in this world, not having a clue of what lies ahead. When we choose to not have a relationship filled with meditation and worship, we're just on a hamster wheel going round and around and around and around. Getting in more debt and more debt and more debt. Taking prescription after prescription after prescription. Never coming into the fullness of our healing. God desires for us to rest. He desires for me to rest. I thank you, Father, for this word today. Hallelujah, because it's bringing revelation to me. And I pray that it's bringing revelation to you as well. Christ asked the disciples, why are they asleep when he was about to die? Matthew 26, verses 39 through 46. And after going a little further, he fell face down and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible that it is consistent with your will, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, So you men could not stay awake and keep watch with me for one hour keep actively watching and praying that you may not come into temptation the spirit is willing but the body is weak he went away a second time and prayed saying my father if this cannot pass away unless i drink it your will be done again he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy so leaving them again he went away and prayed for the third time saying the same words once more then he returned to the disciples and said to them are you still sleeping and resting listen the hour of my sacrifice is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinner whose way and nature is to oppose god get up let us go look my betrayer is near sleeping revelation of that is the weight of the world, the inability to stay awake and stay focused, the lack and the ability to do the will of the Father because of the weakness of the flesh. You cannot do anything in your own strength because the flesh is weak. That's sleeping. When you're all focused, you're sleeping. When you're sick, you're sleeping. When you're angry, anxiety, stress is overwhelming you, you're sleeping. God wants to heal us and set us free and wake us up out of that sleepy slumber state and call us into the marvelous light of his dear son. The greatest gift the world can give us is a delusion, guys. The greatest gift the world can give us is self-righteousness. It's flooded with self-righteousness and pride. The delusion that everything that God has for you, you have to milk the world system in order to get it. No. Thank you, Father, for every need being met in you. Hallelujah, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I know that you are Lord of more than enough. I know that everything we need is in the palm of your hand. 
We rest and we allow you to move forward in the things that you have called us to in Jesus' name. Choose the truth today, guys. Choose righteousness. Choose dominion. Choose eternal life. Life eternal in Christ is the only life there is to live. The more we learn the truth, the more we understand our righteousness. The more we understand our righteousness, the more we are compelled to have dominion. The more we have dominion, the more he is manifested. The more he is manifested, the more we experience his life eternal. The more we experience life eternal, the more the light shines brighter for all the world to see. Thank you, Jesus, for the finished work of the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for life eternal. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us today. This concludes our message, guys. I thank you so much for listening in. I thank you. I pray that this word brings life to you today. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And please, please, please share our message with friends and loved ones. Click on that bell so you can get notification of every time we post a message. Share, like our message. We try. We are getting the word out here, the truth out. No religion, no law. We are about setting the captives free. And we pray that you assist us with that by sharing these messages that we are placing on here. Amen. And so also I want um, you to visit us, not just on YouTube, but we also have Instagram. Amen. He is, therefore I am. We place um, encouraging messages there. She heard, she believed, she prospered. We place encouraging messages there. Also, Fab Stationery, that's where you can find stationery, encouraging Christian stationery that we place there. And then we also have a podcast for women. It's called She Heard, She Believes, She Prospered. We are on all platforms. Thank you, Jesus. We are now on iHeartRadio and also on Amazon. So go check us out. Thank you so much. Amen for following us. Um, thank you for telling others about us. Join in with us to help preach the gospel of grace to reach nations. Hallelujah. Amen. And then if you have any prayer requests, feel free to email us at Hisha, H-I-T-I-A ministries, 1973 at gmail.com. If you have any questions about the message, we are more than happy to answer those questions for you. If you want to be in partnership with Hisha Ministries, feel free to email us. And also, if you would like for me to come to any speaking engagement, please send us an email. We will reply to that email. Hopefully we can get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. I'm sorry if we don't get back in that time frame, but we will get back to you. Amen. And let you know whether or not if we can attend those engagements. So again, thank you so much. And then you can also shop with us, guys. I'm so excited about our website at hisshaministries.square.site. There you'll find apparel, books, journals, bookmarks, tumblers, mugs, stationery, artwork, Everything that inspires you and compels you, amen, to continue your walk in our Lord and Savior, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Continue your walk in the Word. Continue to shine bright as a Christian for all the world to see. Again, we thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to spending time with you again in our next message. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.